Hey everybody, it's Mike Frieder here with On Call Compliance Solutions and I'm back with another compliance tip of the week. This week we're talking about CMMC Control SC.L2-3.13.11 Employee FIPS Validated Cryptography when used to protect the confidentiality of CUI. What a nightmare. So hey, if you're a defense contractor who's feeling overwhelmed, tired, and alone, trying to understand all of this CMMC, DFARS, and NIST SP-171 compliance stuff on top of an already colossal workload, well, I've got great news for you. You found your home here at On-Call Compliance Solutions, where we can help you transform into your company's on-call compliance hero. Let's jump into it. As I like to say, oh, the dreaded FIPS rule. Yes, currently... And this may potentially change in uh, NIST SP-800-171 Revision 3, which is due to come out in 23 sometime. Uh, when using encryption to secure CUI, you must utilize a FIPS-validated encryption if that is the only safeguard, i.e. it's not going to be physically safeguarded as well. That's an important note. Uh, this is not so bad, you guys. If your network is within your secure facility, it is physically protected and does not carry the requirement, so it doesn't apply to everything, but it certainly applies to those key areas such as VPN and wireless access, which cannot be physically protected. Yes, there is an article out there where Microsoft is openly stating that FIPS may not even be the most secure or recommended method of encryption. I get it, this is true, but it doesn't matter as this is the current requirement. Here's a hint, 256-bit AES encryption is FIPS 140-2 compliant. It's available in most products. Let's find out more about what the assessors are looking for on this one because it's pretty short and simple. They're going to determine if FIPS validated cryptography is employed to protect the confidentiality of CUI. Our answer is going to be it's implemented in all cases where encryption is the only available safeguard to protect the confidentiality of CUI. That encryption utilized is FIPS 140-2 uh, validated. So again, um, generally speaking, most wireless and VPN connections already have a 256-bit AES encryption capability. We just need to make sure that's the one that's selected. And there is an amazing way to make this one very, very easy. I know it's very highly talked about. And if you can't figure it out for your organization because you've got some interesting complexities or just really honestly are tired of dealing with compliance and you'd rather us just come do the heavy lift for you, the great news is that at On Call, we work with defense contractors just like you who have had this DFARS, NIST, ITAR, and CMMC compliance stuff dropped into laps like a seal on a sunny day. We teach you how to level up and be a proper On Call compliance hero for your company, eliminating gaps, gray areas, and getting this solved all while showing you how to leverage compliance as your secret weapon to land more defense work with higher profit margins. Now that's what becoming an on-call compliance hero can do for you. If you're looking for more help getting compliant, our compliance experts are always on call for you. Visit cmmccompliancesecrets.com or check out the bio below for links to get help right now. If you love the content we're putting out there for you, help us out with a big thumbs up on that like button, or even better, smash the subscribe button to get the latest compliance content as soon as our compliance nerds roll it out. Until the next compliance tip, my friends, stay safe and secure out there and hit us in the comments below to let us know what you'd like to know more about when it comes to information security and compliance. And I'll see you on the next one.